So, there is someone in my life who's like misogynistic and proud of it. And it's concerning me quite a lot. Not just for me, but like the state of our country. I think it's just a microcosm of the state of our country right now. And we need to talk about it. Let's talk about it. know if you have a blatant misogynist in your life but I know I do just one of the lucky ones I guess and this actually is a very sad and painful thing for me but I cope with my sadness and pain through humor so here are 10 things the misogynist in my life has literally said to me when I tell said misogynist I don't really like the way you're talking to me and their response is you're on your period, I can tell. I'm actually not on my period, I'm ovulating. If you'd like to check my flow app, I'd be happy to share it with you. I, in fact, don't enjoy misogyny any days of the month. Fascinating, I know. The second thing said misogynist has said to me is, maybe your tiny little brains can understand something. Oh, yes, maybe my tiny little brains can understand. Yes, uh-huh, okay. I wish I was joking, but my brains just aren't big enough to make this kind of thing up. The third thing the misogynist in my life has proudly said, Cause Dana, men are just better at working with their hands and women are just better secretaries. Are those the only two options? I'm confused. It must be my little tiny brains confusing me again. Well, first of all, they don't think my job is an actual job, like editing videos isn't a real job. I need to get a secretary job. It's like the little microaggressions, the little put downs, like putting me down when I'm editing videos or I'd be making like a crochet piece for someone who ordered it and paid me to make it for them, AKA it's a job. And he will minimize like your tiny little business, that kind of thing, like just always minimizing so they can feel bigger. It's really gross. It's really icky and my tiny brains do not understand. They just don't get it, I guess. I do wanna open up a conversation around misogyny, not just because it's something I'm experiencing personally with someone very, very close, but it seems to be something that is a little bit of an epidemic on social media and in our presidential campaign. So I do wanna open up a conversation today. I will get to number four, believe you me. There are more things, my misogynist. Me and my misogynist, he's like my misogynist. I put him in my pocket. I've got my little misogynist that I'm carrying around with me. We can minimize him too, right? We just got a tiny little misogynist. He's just in the very tiny back of our brains. Just tiny little voice, just talking about absolutely nothing. But I find it like so funny because I'm surrounded by such beautiful men that wouldn't even think about treating a woman that way. So first of all, I wanna say thank you to men who are not misogynist and uh, men who support women in their dreams and aspirations and authenticity and aren't threatened by it and don't feel the need to like knock you down a peg. I appreciate those types of men. And in fact, it's, it's interesting because when I have, when I'm around a misogynistic men, I have to go into my masculine to protect myself. I love being in my feminine. I love being around a safe man. A safe man is someone who is supportive and protective of not only like, I'm going to beat someone up if they try to beer, but supportive in you and your authenticity and they see you and you can kind of just like ease into your feminine around these types of men. I have a lot of them in my life and I'm very grateful for that. But it's impossible to feel safe around a misogynistic man because to be in my feminine, I have to feel safe, right? So if a misogynistic man is attacking you, trying to make you less than, put you lower than, that's not safe not a safe environment so then you have to become a shell you have to become a masculine to protect yourself and I'm just I'm cutting all misogynists out of my life just goodbye goodbye forever and I'm actually going through a really difficult time because I'm grieving the loss 
of a person in my life that I want in my life and I want to have a relationship with. It's hard when someone close to you is this type of person or exhibiting these types of behaviors. It is so, so sad. Um, because, you know, I want to have a relationship with them. So someone that I love and someone that I'm supposed to love and someone who's supposed to protect me. So it's just very sad when um, I have to protect myself from this person. I have cut this person out of my life and I've been going through like a really intense grieving process. It's like almost grieving the death of someone while they're still alive. And it's really, really sad. I'm going through all the stages of grief and grief and just accepting that I may never have this person in my life ever again. Um, I've been doing a lot of inner child healing work. And it's like, if I wouldn't let my daughter be around this type of person and this type of behavior, why would I subject myself to it? So I've just been like protecting that little girl inside of me. The protection that I never got, because the people that were sp supposed to protect me were pretty abusive, manipulative, and controlling. And I'm not saying I'm a victim in that. I'm just voicing it here because I feel like a lot of people are going through this and it's a very lonely and sad experience. And sometimes I smile when I'm talking about things that are sad because it's just how I cope. I don't know. I always cope with humor and laughing at things, but it's not a laughable matter, but it is something that I want to talk about. So I'm going to talk about it. It's kind of an interesting time in the world, right? We have people who grew up in the 50s, and then women's revolution comes along and all of a sudden now like there could be a woman president and it's like i think we're stepping away from typical gender roles and it's just like kind of a confusing time the dating scene's really tricky it used to be where you just kind of settle down and get married and that's how it is women don't have to be with a man to survive so there's less marriages because of that and there's like a big hookup culture. I'm getting off task, aren't I? Yes. Um, it's just, there's a lot of change happening all at once. There's online dating, you know, like things are shifting very, very fast. So I want to open up a conversation about this today and get your take on it. And I also want to ask a question is, how are you feeling as a man these days? Is it hard for you? Like, what is your experience like? I genuinely want to know. So the misogynist in my life, I never really, was never like blatantly misogynistic till lately. Probably misogynistic, but not like aggressively in your face, like misogynistic and proud um, until lately. And it's very scary. It's actually very, very scary. And that brings me to thing number three, the misogynist in my life has said, straight to my face. Because I had an opinion about anything, no wonder you're 40 and still single. No man's gonna want you. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, that's nice. As if I had no choice in being 40 and single. It must be just because I'm unwantable. That must be why. When you have any sort of opinion that is different from said misogynist, they attack you and put you down and try and make you less than. And this was spurred on because I just had an opinion, just an opinion about anything, just an opinion. It's okay to have an opinion. Things a misogynist has said to me, number five, and it's actually not something he said to me, it's something he said to someone I was dating. And literally, that person who's supposed to protect me says, don't treat her too well. <laughs> oh, you hate women. It's cute. It's real cute. It's real cute how much you hate women. Oh. The fascinating thing about this is I know he says these things to me to gain control and make me feel like worse. Make me feel worse about myself. Make me feel less than. But what it's really doing, it's not making me feel anything about myself because I'm a grown ass woman who has self-confidence and I know myself. It only makes me feel worse about him, but he thinks he's gaining control when he's really just making me never want to be around him ever again. So yes, a man needing to put a woman below him so he can feel big and strong. That's not true strength though, right? Like strength is, I feel like strength is lifting others up. You want people around you to succeed. This person is super vindictive and he doesn't want anyone to succeed unless he can take credit for it. 
and it's it's sad because there's no possible way he got the love that he needed in his formative years to um, have self-confidence where he doesn't have to control someone or bribe someone to be with him. He can allow someone to be with him who wants to be there. Like, he's so obviously super insecure that he needs to control people. Like, people wouldn't just be with him because he's lovable. He needs to control them with money or put downs, that kind of thing. So, the reason I'm even talking about this is because there might be women out there who will internalize misogyny like I did once upon a time and actually believe that you are less than and you're not. I might have tiny little brains, but I do know that much. You are so worthy and you are not less than. You are not less important than anyone or more important than anyone. If someone is projecting their internalized hatred for themselves onto you, you actually don't need to take that on. You don't need to internalize that and make that part of your identity like they have. They probably had someone telling them they were a piece of shit growing up, so they therefore internalize that and then therefore need to control people to feel loved, need to control people's finances so they won't leave. The misogynist is really a wounded person. So I'm just making a choice to, in my family unit, to be the end of the line um, with this type of behavior. If I do in fact internalize this misogyny, I'm going to project that onto my kids and then so on and so on and so on. And I'm just here to say that my brains, although they may be tiny, are capable, even if you got tiny little nugget brains, they are capable of making change. A change in this pattern that is passed down from generation to generation. And I also want to know how to support men in this change. I want men to feel powerful and be able to live in their masculine and feel secure um, that we're not, we're not trying to take your place as women. I want to support men through all these changes as well as I need support. I need you, I need help from the men in my world to help me feel safe and um, cared about and loved. And that will help me live in my feminine, which will, you know, create that beautiful dynamic between masculine and feminine, which I prefer to live in my feminine. I've just been surrounded by so much toxic masculinity and misogyny that I have grown up having to live in my masculine so much. It's kind of wearing on my internal system. Um, I notice that every time I make some progress in my life and then I'm around this misogynistic person, it's like two steps forward, 10 steps back. So I've just decided to cut them out of my life completely. I've given up that hope that things will ever be different and just fully radically accepted that this person is the way they are. Lots of lovely attributes and very misogynistic. So it's obviously not black and white. If someone was just misogynistic, I obviously would have cut them out of my life a long time ago, but I just wanna come on here today because a younger version of myself would have internalized these horrible things that this misogynistic person has said to me and believed him and felt less than. So here I am having to protect myself and even make this video and wanting to protect other females as well as males. Um, I'll get to that in a second. From this type of behavior. Guys, if you think this is a woman problem, I would like to ask you a question. Have you ever been falsely accused of being an asshole when you're not? Have you ever been walking behind a woman down the street and you're not a predator, you're just a normal, normal dude, and she looks behind you like freaked out that you're gonna hurt her. We women live in a very unsafe world. At least I personally grew up in a very unsafe environment. Let me just tell you this misogynist was the sane person in the family, so we'll get to that in another video. Sorry, I use humor to cope, I really do. It's, um, it's been hard. It's been hard. It's hard when someone who's supposed to love and protect you is misogynistic toward you. 
and tries to make you feel lower and less than. Anyway, I wanna know if you feel like opening up, have you ever dealt with someone who's just like blatantly misogynistic? Super charismatic and looks like a good guy to everyone on the outside. But when you are one-on-one -on -one with this person, little microaggressions, little knocks put you down. Have you ever experienced that? If you have, my heart goes out to you. It is fucking painful. Are we victims though? No, we are not. Because we are grown ass adults and we don't have to internalize that. We don't have to internalize it, make it part of our identity. I think I'm repeating myself. My tiny little brains just tend to repeat themselves sometimes. I apologize. So I don't know if you've seen my musical. There's two episodes so far, but it's kind of, um, it's kind of a physical representation of this awakening I've had um, where I cut this toxic person out of my life. And I've always been hanging on to this relationship, wanting to make it work and wanting to have a relationship. And I finally just cut this person out. And it has been so painful, but such a relief. And um, that's why I named my project Another Dumb Blonde, because I am taking back my power. I am not gonna let this person push me around and make me feel like I'm dumb. Um, I know how smart I am. I know how capable I am. And sure, call me dumb. I don't give a flying fuck. I know I am worthy of love. I know I am worthy of being treated well. And I only let people in my life who are in that category. Something a misogynist in my life has literally said to me, number six, Dana, when's the last time a woman's ever invented anything? That is an excellent question and I'm so happy you asked. So for you today, I'm going to read a few things that women have invented. Windshield wipers, dishwasher, home security, fire escapes, monopoly. This whole time you were pass and go and you had no idea a woman invented monopoly. Paper bags, bulletproof fiber at home aquariums, Birth control pills and bras. Well, I would hope a woman would invent those. Call waiting and caller ID. Car heater. Central heating. A woman with a vagina invented that. They sure did. Alphabet blocks. Chemotherapy. Child carriers. Chocolate chip cookies. Circular saw. Stop it right freaking now, Tabitha Babbitt. A shaker woman is believed to have designed and created a circular saw entirely of her own design in 1810. Tabitha. Every time my misogynist uses their circular saw, I hope they think of Tabitha. Clothes ringers, coffee filters, computer algorithm, computer software, curling iron, bra, makes sense, dishwasher, disposable diapers, electric water heaters, electric refrigerator, feeding tube, foot pedal trash can, fruit press. I'm just on F. I could go on. Ice cream maker? Uh, my misogynist king loves ice cream. So every time you eat ice cream, I hope you know. A woman invented that. I hope you know. So. Medical syringe. Locomotive chimney. Liquid paper. You know what I wanted to do when my misogynist literally said, Diana, when's the last time a woman ever invented anything? So I wanted to go into his house and remove all of the things that women have invented so he could therefore feel what it would be like to live without the things that women have in fact invented. Take the heater out of his car when it is 20 below zero in Montana. Dishwasher, who needs that? No one needs a dishwasher. We wash things by hand. Like it's the 19 fucking 50s. I would love for him to be washing all his dishes by hand. Just to be reminded of things women invented. My friend also told me like women invented the internet. Is that true? Is that true? I believe it. I know, get this. Women are in fact capable of creating things. A woman in fact created the misogynist in my life. How about that? Wow. I mean, it's such a stupid statement and comment that it made me embarrassed for him, but also, and I don't really need to like explain what women have invented because obviously women have invented things. It's just, I can't, I can't be around that. I cannot be around that energy, that type of 
stupidity. Even these teeny tiny little microscopic brains can understand that women have in fact invented things. And now I want to invent something like really bad, but I want it to be like something really, really stupid. Like I want to invent electronic underwear that catch your period blood and like burn it so you never have to deal with it. You know why? Because this person used to make fun of me because I had period stains on my underwear when they would do my laundry. Oh, you're right, racing stripes. Like insinuating that I shit my pants when it was literally just period blood on my undies. And I was too embarrassed to tell anyone I got my period because I got it very early. Hmm. I think I just, I think I just said a lot of things on the internet right now. Hmm. I'll have to consult my tiny little brains later and see why I did that. So I guess that was number nine. Okay, thing number seven, the misogynist in my life has said to me. So I got into Berkeley College of Music and when I was 19, I was dating someone and we moved together to Boston because I got into college and he decided to follow me to Boston. The misogynist in my life can't say, hey, I'm proud of you for going to college. Their interpretation of this whole event is, you left me here and went off gallivanting with some man around the country. I went to college. Like he can't even acknowledge that I went to college. I didn't know tiny little brains could rhyme like that. That's exciting, exciting news. I don't know if he's threatened by the fact that he didn't go to college and I'm a college graduate and I'm proud of that and I should be proud of that and I should be surrounded by people who are proud of me. Um, who knew? Who knew? But he can't even say I went to college. He calls it gallivanting with some man around the country and acts as if I've abandoned him by going to college. And I got knowledge in college. And is he threatened by my college knowledge? My tiny little brains cannot compute. And as I'm saying this out loud, like I feel, I don't even feel hatred or anger towards this person anymore. I just feel sad that they were so horribly let down by their parents, that they internalized this lack this feeling of not good enough where they have to put others down to feel good enough. Um, I grew up having to achieve to feel good about myself and that's something I'm trying to unwire but very grateful that I don't feel like I'm I need to put other people down. I like to lift other people up. I want to see people succeed whether it has anything to do with me or not. Like this person, um, when I'm, well, okay, when I'm struggling, oh, this leads me to number eight thing that my misogynist has said to me. Struggling in college, and I call this person needing a little bit of emotional support. I actually got to Boston. I broke up with my boyfriend and found out classes were full. It was some like fluke weird thing with Berkeley College of Music. And I wasn't able to go to school until the spring, even though they said I was accepted and ready to start in the fall they did it to a bunch of people and a bunch of good friends that i'm still friends with it happened to as well but um so i had to get a job i worked at the cheesecake factory so i moved to college to get the knowledge i'm working at the cheesecake factory i broke up with my boyfriend living with a boyfriend i'm broken up with and i was struggling it was a really hard time being so far away from home i called this person to get some support and what they say to me is ah dana quit feeling sorry for yourself literally literally said that. Here I am in Boston all alone. I feel like I have absolutely no support system. I feel that way because it's true. I feel like I don't have anybody to call. Thankfully over the years I have focused more on who do I have to call rather than I need to be able to call this person and they need to give me what I need. I've been um, so grateful and so lucky to have people in my life who do cheer me on, who do love me unconditionally. And that's so important in finding that um, for my mental health. And just, it's really, really helped me heal from this type of abuse. By the way, side note on this topic, when I have needs and need emotional support, I'm met with, quit feeling sorry for yourself. But when they're going through something, I'm expected to be their literal therapist. I don't know if my tiny little brains are calculating that right, but that does not seem fair. Mm -mm, does not. I think once I let go of getting my needs met by this person who's supposed to meet my needs, I can get my needs met 
by other people. There are beautiful people who are super encouraging of my well-being. They care about my well-being. This person also like, when I'm not doing well, they kick me while I'm down. When I am doing well, they want to be involved and super supportive. Like once I'm doing well, like I got a song on iTunes and I got this big shout out on YouTube and got 10,000 subscribers overnight. And this person who, ah, oh, Diana, quit feeling sorry for yourself. The same person who said that was all of a sudden interested in being in my life very supportive, calling me every day, checking my stats, like that's conditional love. That is not unconditional love. Someone who kicks you when you're down, but wants to like have some of the glory when you're doing well, that is not support, that is not love. It's not even kind, it's just so self-serving and it just like, it's so hard on your heart. And I do have empathy for this person because that's the format that they grew up in right? That's the construct that they grew up in. And they never got that unconditional love. It was always conditional. Be the good, be the good boy. And when someone doesn't see him as that, he rages. And every time lately I've been pointing my finger at someone else, I point it just back at myself and say, hey, where have where am I exhibiting some of these behaviors and how can I change it? So we can have a healthier next generation. I can have a healthier sense of self and self-worth. And I no longer project these things onto other people because I have emulated some of these um, bad behaviors. I've internalized some of this misogyny in my own self and it's so destructive. It's so sad. Um, I would never let my, if this person was my son, I would never let him be treated like that. I would, I just want to give this person the unconditional love that they've always deserved. But until they know it themselves, deep down, they're not going to receive it. They're not going to accept it. And I noticed that in my life, I've been um, attracting extremely misogynistic and narcissistic type of men. But now I can see it. Like I really cherish the men in my life who are not this way. And I've attracted a lot of them too. And the more growth and healing that I, I go through, the more I can recognize these different types of people. And I can recognize it in myself and therefore change it. I have a lot of love for my misogynist and a lot of um, sadness. Because I want this person to feel whole and complete without having to put others down. That's so sad. I like, it's so sad. All I can do is love myself unconditionally and not allow that into my life. That's all I can do. And that's, and there's a grieving process involved, but there's also like a strength and um, confidence. I'm reclaiming um, that part of myself that feels less than and feels unworthy and then maybe pr could project that onto like my kids someday and that's something I'm just not willing to do at the you know it stops with me it stops with me that's all we can do and I can see a lot of myself in this person like the lack of self-love uh, I can love them from a distance um, but I'm not willing to fall in love with people like that from now on. Like I have fallen in love with people like that. I think a lot of people, if you grow up in like a stable environment emotionally, you have an oh hell no meter and like you expect to be treated a certain way because you, you have that um, foundation. But me growing up, I didn't have that boundary or that foundation like, oh, this is a red flag, red flag, alert, alert. I'm like, hmm, misogyny, this is cozy, this is comfy. Hmm, let's sleep with this for a little while, see what happens. So anyway, my project, my musical I'm writing, it's kind of um, this, my whole world got kind of cracked open and I'm looking at myself from the outside, looking at my behaviors, looking at my own narcissism, looking at my own internalized misogyny, looking at all these things and healing them, accepting them. Like, hello, I see you. Uh, we're not doing that anymore, sis. Mm -mm. No, we're not. Sometimes I have to be sassy about it to make some change in my brains. Number 10 thing, I didn't plan this video out. There's, those are just things on the top of my mind. Um, he screamed at me to shut the f up and get the f out of his house. I do remember him saying that. Oh yeah, he did. He did. He said, shut the f up, get the f out of my house and make sure you clean it before you leave. 
And if you can be barefoot and pregnant while you're cleaning, that would be preferable. That's actually part of my stand-up comedy bit. Um, he did not, in fact, say the barefoot and pregnant part. I, I ad-libbed a little bit, but he like screamed at me to get the f out of his house and um, to clean it before I left. Let's just do an 11, why not? So this person, um, I had to finish a video edit for my job. It's how I make money. And he invited me to do something with him and I was like, nope, I gotta finish this. He invited me a literal 10 times. Oh yeah, come on. And he's planning my day for me. Oh, you could film this and you could do this. And I'm like, nope, I got it covered. Thanks, I got my, my job handled got it covered thank you so much thank you so thank you so much for your input um so i decided not to go with him to do the thing because i genuinely i was building a website for my crochet and editing a video to post because i was posting two videos a week at the time and he called me selfish for doing this and not just not doing what he wanted me to do um so if you don't do what this person wants you to do when they want you to do it all of a sudden you're selfish then goes on a rant i've done so much for you and then will bring up everything that they've done for you that you never asked them to do for you they've done willingly and use it as leverage to put you down and make you feel like you're being a spoiled little brat when really those are things that this person's supposed to do for you it's just and things that I greatly appreciated and have expressed appreciation for, but they'll use that against you. So they don't give you things to help you, it's to control you. Because then when you don't do what they want you to do and they use all those things against you and then tell everyone in your family that you're a spoiled little brat and just um, selfish and all this stuff and then get your family against you and it's just, it's just so toxic and something I'm not willing to be a part of, nor am I willing to internalize. Um, and I just want you to know that if you have a misogynistic person in your life, you are worthy, you are lovable and valued, and what they're saying is just utter total bullshit. That's all, that's all I wanted to say today. Um, but I do wanna open up conversation because I know it is a hard time for a lot of men right now and I want to also acknowledge that and open up a conversation because women no longer need men, which I think is healthy. Like, do you wanna be with someone who feels like a prisoner to you? Or do you want to be with someone who genuinely loves you and wants to be with you? Like if you feel like you need a prisoner who you, I think it's it's masculine and um, lovely and healthy masculine to want to protect and provide. I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, but when it goes into the slippery slope of control and demean, that's unhealthy masculine. The healthy masculine allows the feminine to be side by side, not below then, not below. They do have different um, energies to them and I think that's so beautiful. I think that's so beautiful. Um, I'm in no way hating on men right now. I love men. I'm so grateful for the men in my life who are not misogynists and who are just beautiful, healthy people. Um, do I think misogynists need to burn and die? No, I think they need to do a lot of healing. They have a lot of things they've inter internalized from not feeling loved unconditionally. Hopefully they can figure it out. All I can control is me. So that's what I'm going to do. And I also want to stand up for other people who might be going through this, who haven't um, done enough work to realize that it's bullshit. It's bullshit. You don't have to believe what people tell you. You don't have to believe a misogynist telling you who you are. Like, I know who I am and I, I think that's why we're butting heads at this point in life, is I know how to stand up for myself now and the misogynist relied on me being below him and looking up to him and kind of seeing him as a hero my whole life. And now that I have opinions and agency and I've kind of released myself from the enmeshment of this dynamic, um, he doesn't like it because he feels powerless. And I feel empowered, but I don't need to like, I don't need him to be below me either. Like I feel 
like it's ridiculous the things that he's spewing at me but I also still see him as just a lovely and valuable person who has a lot of hurt and who has a lot of unresolved unhealed parts of him that he's projecting onto me and I'm not having it I'm just not having it and I want him to be healed I want him to feel unconditionally loved and I hope he can find that I hope he can get there within himself but that is not my job um, so I'm like completely separating myself from this person or any people who exhibit these behaviors and not that people have to agree with me all the time but they do have to value me and care care about my well-being at the very least like that's the very that's the very least of what I'm accepting in my life from now on so I don't know if you needed to hear this um, younger Dana needed to hear this desperately and um, I love you you are so worthy so beautiful so loved um, I also want to hear from the men and I also want you to thank the men in your life who are beautiful men and who lift you up and who see you and value you so um, let's spread more of that into the world and um, it feels good to let go feels good to let go of the other stuff. Um, there's still like a glimmer, like a hope that this person will eventually come around. Um, and if they don't, I'm continuing my grieving process and I just have to take care of myself first. So interesting, different video today, but um, I think it's an important message right now, especially there's a lot of red pill theory, all that bullshit going around. Um, and all you have to do is just be good. Be good and protect yourself and you're loved and that's all so see you next time